What's up, guys? It's Cash Flow Cart, and I feel like I'm filming an emergency video about Jeppy. Okay, it is. It's ten ten on Wednesday night, and I wasn't even gonna film this video tonight. I was kind of getting my thoughts together about it, um, you know, taking some notes, what I wanted to cover. Then I started making the thumbnail. And now I'm just like so worked up about it. This video, I'm recording this video is, I guess, a, almost a therapy session at this point. But, you know, let's get into it. We're going to cover a few things. And like I said, I um, haven't fully put together some fancy slide deck for this. I'm really just going to be, you know, talking about Jeppy from a high level perspective. Um, you know, first off, if you guys are unfamiliar with this ticker, it's JP Morgan's Equity Premium Income ETF. And, you know, it's, I feel like every, it's all anyone has been talking about. I mean, I know that's a bit of an exaggeration, but just look at this quote here from Morningstar, which is, you know, obviously a very trusted resource. By our estimates, Jeppy gathered about 27 billion in net inflows in its first three years of existence, easily making it the most successful ETF debut in history. And I'm, I'm reading stuff like this and I'm like, why, why is a covered call ETF the most successful ETF debut in history? And I don't fully understand the why, um, to be quite honest with you, I think it might be, you know, kind of a group think mindset. I don't know if social media has an effect on so many investors thinking that this is some beginner friendly investment. Also, the short track record of 36 months for it is like, I don't think anyone really sees any, sees how this ETF works in different markets, sees what happens to this ETF in, you know, a real type of recessionary environment. And again, I also saw this, which was almost like the icing on the cake for if I was going to record this video. Um, let's just watch this clip. What's the most expensive? Jeppy, the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF has a whopping 10.65% dividend yield, which means yeah. that for every $100 you have invested in this ETF, they'll pay you $10.65 in dividends every single year. Which They'll pay you $10.65 in dividends every single year. That is just bl that is blatant misinformation, okay? And I'm like... I see a lot of stuff like this floating around on the internet and I think it's um I think it's brainwashing a lot of people into buying Jeppy. That $10.65 that he's referencing is the trailing that is trailing 12 months of payouts and you know we dig a little deeper into this ETF it doesn't have some sort of you know steady dividend that just is going to stay month to month. It, it's going to increase year over year. This is a very actively managed strategy. And even like, you know, even the fund managers at JP Morgan, they don't know what that dividend is going to be until they kind of see how their strategy unfolds, you know, for that month or the previous month. And I'm like, I know guys 1065 is not exactly making it rain but I'm if you watching. invested ten thousand dollars into jeppy you'd be getting paid one thousand sixty five dollars in cash every single year without having to lift a finger now here this is ridiculous <laughs> i mean this type of content is ridiculous and i don't know i don't know if you know guys who might have a big social media following are kind of just dumbing stuff down for the sake of, you know, getting more views. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why everyone is, you know, pitching Jeppy as some perfect play for beginners for their portfolio. Some must have. And, you know, I, <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm frustrated. I'm really, I'm genuinely frustrated with Jeppy. And I don't know, I don't want to get too over the top. Let's move on. We talked about this a little bit. Jeppy's amazing yield. Guys, anytime you see this, what are we even looking at here? 
So you see this dividend yield here, you're like, oh, 9.3%. And this guy said, you know, 10 point whatever, whatever number you see, that's on a trailing 12 month basis. This is no guarantee of their future payouts, okay? This is not, not that any dividends from a blue chip stock are guaranteed, but this is not apples to apples, okay? This is not some qualified dividend. And we're gonna dig it more into that later, but again, right here, TTM. You can even, we can even read through this. Sum of ordinary cash dividend payments in the last 12 months divided by the last closing price, okay? And this is also not even telling a full story because in the past 12 months, Jeppy has been down. So as their share price is going lower, that yield is going to look inflated. That yield is going to look higher just because of the decay that, you know, the Jeppy ETF has seen. And I mean, it's only going to get worse. I don't even, I cannot even wrap my head around this, right? <laughs> we'll look at some charting. So here I've put, you know, the S&P 500 price return in the past year, and I've charted Jeppies too. You can see, you know, the difference between these two numbers is, you know, what, 16%. So, I mean, if it's underperforming the market by 16%, for me as an investor, it's, it's really, no, no matter the yield, I'm not, I'm not interested in it. I mean, this is going to destroy your original investment. It's going to be like, I don't know. It's just going to exponentially decay year after year. And I mean, again, this video is pretty unorganized, but I honestly don't really care because I had to get this out here. And then, okay, moving on. <laughs> if you hold Jeppy and you're like me in the sense that you're building your dividend growth portfolio in a taxable account, you know, you better really like paying taxes on that income because a lot, oftentimes in this dividend growth investing community, we're talking about qualified dividends. You know, we're talking about undervalued stocks that pay out qualified dividends that have done so for like, I don't know, at least 12 plus years or, you know, maybe we'll make some exceptions here and there, but like, stuff with track records. And then we, we look at Jeppy's dividend. I mean, I'm sure you guys probably know this, but a co like some equity premium ETF is not paying you a qualified dividend. You're gonna be taxed at a higher rate on this amazing yield, which, you know, the yield is, <laughs> again, I feel like I'm talking in circles, but the yield for this one is like, it misses so much of the story with this ETF. And like, I don't know if new investors are getting, you know, rocked to sleep because they're seeing like, I don't, they're seeing a high starting dividend yield. And it's not even, this is not the same as dividend investing. It's simply not. Hopefully I can, you know, reel it back in for these next couple points, but covered call ETFs, um, any ETF that uses kind of this strategy of, you know, providing premium as their form of returning value to shareholders, they don't recover. That is a, that's a blatant fact because these covered calls that, you know, I guess JP Morgan is selling. If that call, if it's, if that strike price on those covered call hits, oh my God, I can't even talk. If the strike price on some of these covered calls hits, that limits upside. I mean, mathematically, covered call ETFs cannot recover. I mean, they <laughs> they cannot perform in the long run. They simply cannot. They they if you hold a covered call ETF for you know over over two years, you probably have a zero percent chance. I said probably. You have a 0% chance of, I don't know, regaining, regaining your initial investment. And just to illustrate this with a chart, 
So I'm stop rambling. Let's look at QYLD, which is a NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF. You know, I'm showing this one obviously because you look at Jeppy's chart and I think this is part of the problem, to be honest. It doesn't have enough track record for people to really understand from a visual perspective, all the things that can go wrong with this one. So with that being said, you know, when in doubt, excuse me, when in doubt, zoom out. <laughs> so we'll look at this one. So, you know, this is the QILD. It obviously tracks the NASDAQ 100. And um, as you can see from the chart, you know, maybe it tracks the NASDAQ 100, you know, to the downside. I mean, we see COVID 2020, you can clearly identify the COVID sell-off, okay? What doesn't happen after this sell-off? It never, it fails to ever make new highs. And this is what I was saying, guys. Covered call strategies, they do not ever fully recover, okay? So if you're parking money here, understand that the only good return you're going to get from something like the good arguably is going to be, you know, that distribution, that monthly payment, whatever it is. Um, you know, we'll even look at like the NASDAQ on the same time frame. What am I doing here? Here's COVID. This is 2020 right here, this shaded area. Okay, so COVID hits and what was it, guys? February, you know, I was in I was in high school, <laughs> so I don't, um, it was February. COVID hits, you know, every, it all breaks loose. You know, the, wor the world is ending. And again, the NASDAQ ends up being okay and actually just ripping, you know, to new highs from, I guess, the beginning of 2020 through the end of 2021 is like, the one of the most explosive bull markets like that we could that we've ever seen. With that being said, let's go back to this other covered call ETF. And, you know, you see, you see the bull market. Okay, on these ETF on these covered call ETFs, it's there. But it's not really there. Because, you know, you don't recover back ever. You never do. Okay, so I guess once you um, once you have an unrealized loss on something like QILD or Jeppy, you know, it's very unlikely that you'll ever even be back to break even. Um, and this is a fact. So again, let's keep moving on. And my biggest fear. My biggest fear with this whole Jeppy trend, and I understand we'll talk about it. Maybe there could be, you know, a few uses for it. But my biggest fear with this trend is that, you know, beginner investors new to this dividend investing community are going to get in a situation where just like a ton of other people on the internet, they're going to build these positions in Jeppy and, you know, then let's say a bear market hits or there's recessionary fears for 2024. I don't know if that's going to unfold or not. You know, I'm not a wizard, but something happens where the market takes, you know, a real correction, not, not what we've seen in the past few months, like a real correction. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden these, these guys holding, these guys holding on to Jeppy are like, so discouraged and like they completely just abandon the school of investing and that's like that is my biggest fear with this whole jeppy trend is that it's going to just lead to so much discouragement i mean if there's a bad market and you're picking dividend stocks or you know i'm not the biggest fan of schd but you're let's say you use schd and that ETF or underlying security falls with the market 
as a dividend investor, that's good for us because we're able to lower our cost basis, lock in, you know, a more attractive yield. And it's still, I guess, a reasonable belief to, um, to sort of believe that these, that they will recover. SCHD will recover. Okay. At some point, individual stocks you might be interested in that are quality, you know, they could, they most likely will recover as long as there's not some sort of material issue with the company and like Jeppy won't recover. Um, again, that felt like the most hectic rant ever, <laughs> but, uh, I guess to end this video off, we're going to talk about two potential uses. So it's like, I must, okay, I guess I only put one potential use. I must say something nice about this one. Um, so I'm going to try to do that. So in my opinion, if you're a more experienced investor and you probably have some sort of nest egg you're not really young and in like the accumulation phase, you know, you're definitely a seasoned investor. If you're in those shoes and let's say you enter one investment that you have high hopes for in terms of, I guess, share price appreciation. And then you also enter Jeppy at the same time. I guess it could be used as like a hedge, you know? So as, the stock or position you're bullish on as it appreciates and Jeppy kind of flounders slash decays, you can collect that income from Jeppy and then I guess sell it at a loss in order to, you know, offset some of your gains on this other bullish play. Even trying to explain that, I mean, that was wordy and confusing. This is not a beginner friendly investment. I can't, even when I made this bullet point, I, I struggle to think of, you know, actual, you know, practical uses for this ETF. And like, I made a whole other video that's actually organized and good and not some uh, crazy rant. If you want to check out my original video about Jeppy and this kind of theme. But uh, yeah, no, today I hopped on here and I guess I just got this off my chest because I don't know why everyone is promoting Jeppy. I think it's, I think it's mainly for clicks. Okay, let's try to be a little more positive to end the video. <laughs> so um, if, you, if this is your first time you've seen my channel, I'm a 22-year-old uh, dividend growth investor. Um, I've been doing this since I was 16, I want to say, is when I opened my my main dividend growth portfolio. Um, I'm not claiming to be some genius. I do have two years of experience working in the financial services industry for a financial advising firm. So, you know, whatever that's worth. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed today's video and if you were able to sit through this uh this rant, I guess, um, please subscribe. I'm going to release new content on Mondays and Thursdays. And, um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for tuning in guys and everyone take care.